Oh Lord, it's our word from a heart that believes, a heart that trusts. Father, as a people all over the world, all over the nations, we say you are able. Able to make things align for our good. Able to turn things around for our good. Lord, it's our confession coming from a heart of believer in you that you are able. Able to solve, able to heal, able to deliver. Able to lift up. Able to set free. We worship you, Jesus. We exalt you, Spirit of a living God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Our God is able. Awesome time in God's presence. Thank you, Father, for you can have your seat in God's presence. All right, so I believe it's a season that we need to do much of doing than talking. So I'm um, I have a word tonight that should transform your life if you will listen for the wholeness of your spirit. If you have a Bible, I want you to open to one opening this evening. James chapter 1, and I'll read 22 to 25. James 1, 22 to 25. Allow me to sit. All right. So, the word of the Lord says, do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourself. The Bible says, do what it says. I'm reading from the New International Version. Anyone who listens to the word, but does not do what it says, is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror. And after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. Verse 25 says, but the man who looks intently into the perfect Lord that gives freedom, and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has had, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he says. Tonight, for a very few minutes, I'm teaching on just do it. Tell your neighbor, just do it. If you're looking, if you're watching, and you're listening with someone, or you're listening by yourself, I want you to tell yourself, just do it. I want you to shout it, just do it. Listen, let's just pray before I go to the discourse today. Father, thank you for your word. Because the entrance of your word gives light and understanding unto the simple. We've come to your word, O oh God, to take treasures from your word. I pray, O oh God, that the reason for sending your word shall be fulfilled. I pray, O oh God, that we shall discover and live in the fullness of your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Just do it. What do you think of when you see the ad, just do it? You think of Nike, right? Aha. Uh -huh. As you know, what, Nike is the world's leading manufacturer of sports equipment. At one time, they were just manufacturers of running shoes and all of that. But they migrated and moved from there to sports equipment. Probably just about anyone in the world recognized the Nike logo, and can say something about the slogan, just do it. Whenever we think of Nike, we think of their slogan. What does that mean? Well, Nike is the business to let you understand. I'm not trying to talk about Nike, but let's just have some conversation. <laughs> you know, Nike is in the business to just tell you, okay, you love playing basketball. Don't just talk about it. Don't just think about it. Don't brag about it. Play basketball. Just do it. Oh, you, you talk about running. And I can cover 200 meters. I can. Don't just say it. Do it. So, their business is about, don't just talk the talk. It's time to walk the work. They want you to walk it. They want you to do it. The message is very clear. In the same way, there comes a time for us as Christians, for you and I to stop merely reading, studying, and discussing, and thinking, and praying about our visions, about our dreams, about things we know it's right. It is time to experience them. It's time to practice them. And it's time to live it even now. It's time to start living out your plans, your purpose, your vision. 
It is time to do that which God has called you for. It's time for you to live in the fullness of God's plan. I want you to tell somebody, or if you're listening to yourself, just tell yourself, it's time to do it. It's time to live in the fullness of God's purpose. You cannot grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ and do nothing. If you have seen the Savior, then you must do something. You must live the life. You must make a difference. You must act differently. Long before there was a Michael Jordan, hockey tennis shoes uh, and basketball and all of that, and, just, and, and saying just do it. Long before that time, there was a God. Long before there was Nike. Long before there was a Nike in Seattle. In America, long before there was Seattle, there was a God who was saying to people, just do it. So a man of character and a man of faith, Noah, God said to him, build me an ark. And because without this ark, the future of the world will be uncertain. He said, build the ark and just do it. Before there was a ark, God spoke to Abraham, a businessman in your of Chadis. And God said to him, I'm going to separate you. I want you to leave your father's house, leave everything. I'm going to start a line in a generation from you. And he said to him, just do it. He told a ship, Ribiera, a ship Riera, in the backside of the desert by the name of Moses, a man of about 80 years. He said to him, leave all you know. I'm going, to, I'm going to need you to lead this nation out of the land of bondage. I'm going to use you to deliver my people from slavery. And he said to him, just do it. Long before Seattle existed, there were people who were living in Jerusalem. They were the least thought of of people. They were not in the whiz woo in Jerusalem. But, they, but Jesus of Nazareth looked at them, 12 disciples, and some guys who also believed in him. And he said, go, make disciples of all nations. He looked at them and said, just do it. Go make disciples for me. Just go and do it. When Jesus was alive, and when Jesus, Jesus is still alive, when Jesus was walking the street of Jerusalem in the physical, there was a time he went to a wedding party. You know, Jesus also went to a wedding party. I think that's just kind of nice. I mean, I, I, sometimes I read scriptures and I'm thinking, did he wear the Ashwe B? Was he in an one big clothes or something? But you know, Jesus basically was there. You know, you can say that Jesus would not wait. What if Mary had sown one for him? I don't know. But let's just talk about fact of scriptures. And Bible says Jesus went to Canaan in Galilee and uh, uh, Canaan in Galilee and there was a wedding there. And Bible told us that Mary, Bible says Mary, uh, the, the mother of Jesus, had that wine had finished. I went to Jesus and said, do something. And Jesus called them and he told them, fill some cans up and just take out of it and give to the person. He just told them, just do it. As I say, just do it. Mary looked at them and said, whatever he said to you, just do it. Listen to this. There is no time again... There is no time more than now. There is no season more than now. There is no space more than now for you to do what God has said to you to do. Somebody is saying, I can't. I can't do it. I am limited. I, I am my family. You are giving excuses. But God is looking at you and God is saying, do it. It's time for you to do it. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 31. Whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Today, the outcry of God has not changed. Like Mary told those guys, he said, whatever Jesus said, just do it. God is also telling you, he's saying, Fisayo, do it. Harlem, do it. Femi, do it. Benga, do it. He's still telling us uh, precisely all of us here, 44 members, there are things he's telling you, it's time for you to do them. Many times some of us are looking for motivation. Allow me to say to you that motivation is a trap. Motivation is a ruse. No one will motivate you. Motivate yourself. You don't need motivation. God is your number one motivator. He has said to you, do it. And it's time to do it. Tell someone I'm going to do it. Whatever you feel like doing, it's time to start digging. Start time to start doing it. I, I tell you, I, I can't remember how many times I've prayed. Not because I've been motivated to pray. I pray because it's a duty to pray. It's a relationship with God I have to keep. I can't remember how many times I cast out devils and do counseling. Not because I was feeling happy or because I just wanted to do it. Listen, somebody say, you know, I, I need someone to just inspire me. Someone to just motivate me. That's a trap. Hello? 
Just do it. It's a duty. It's a discipline. It's time to do it. I don't know how many times I've labored on people uh, because it's a duty and I have to do it diligently. Bible says uh, Matthew 27, 21, 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Some people think the will of the Father is only to just live righteously. Some people think the will of the Father is only to just pray. But allow me to say to you that the will of God transcends all of those things. The will of God also includes the personal things he has told you. The things he has told you to do. That is the will of the Father. That is God's desire for you. He has told you, you need to build businesses for me. You need to, do, you need to build businesses. You need to develop ideas. He has told you, you are going to be an revivalist for me. You can't say, I, I obey the Bible alone, but you don't obey the Rema word. The things God has said to you. So it's important for you and I to understand that when God says something, God says the heaven, the kingdom of heaven is about those who do the will of the Father. What's God's will? God's will is in his word. The word he says to you, that dream you had, that vision, that idea, that possibilities that cannot be taken away from your heart. It's time for you to do it. It's not about those who say they have a vision. It's about those who do something about their vision. I'm tired of people who come around me and say, you know, <laughs> I have big dreams. You know, God just woke me up and said, I'm going to have this big company. And I saw the company. And I'm looking at them in the now. What are you doing? They are looking for that perfect time. That time that things will be rosy. All things will come together. You need to start doing it now. One way you show God that you believe in his vision is for you to start making plans, for you to start doing something about what God has revealed to you. And that's quite important. Being a Christian is more than just saying the right words. It's not just about a profession of faith. Even a sincere profession of faith. No, it's more than words. It's action. We are transformed by Jesus when we do the will of the Father. When we do the will of the Father. If you are going to talk the talk, you also need to better walk the walk. Tell your neighbor, walk the walk. And tell him, walk the talk. <laughs> you need to walk the talk. I'm tired of people just talking. It's time to walk it. Walk what you are saying. Don't say, I, I, I'm a leadership expert. You can't lead yourself. Who are you? Come on. Stop that. You need to walk it. First of all, leadership starts from yourself. You lead yourself first. We need to start becoming an example, an image of what we say we want to do. I'm tired of people just dreaming dreams. Young people can achieve great things. Zuckerberg was not 50 years old when he built Facebook. You can build your companies in your 30s, in your 20s. Age is just a number. Start doing it. Sir. I know pastors, sir, even in our ministry, who started pastoring at the, in their 20s, early 20s. Sir. It's not a function of age, it's a function of grace. It's not a function of age. It's a function of how persuaded you are concerning what God has called you to do. It's not a function of age. It's a function of preparation. How prepared are you for what God is calling you for? How prepared are you for where God is sending you to? How prepared are you for what God has in mind for your life? It's time to talk it. Anybody who has ever attained anything in this kingdom, we are not just dreamers. We are not just talkers. They were doers. And that's what James said. He said, do not just be hearers of the word. You look at yourself in the mirror and just, ha, I'm a great man. I'm a great man. And then you leave that place and say, I'm not great anymore. It's about the doing. Some, and that's why, some, you know, that's why some ladies go around with mirrors. <laughs> Praise God. Some 10 minutes ago, they saw the way they look. But they need to remind themselves constantly. So they bring it up. I, I saw a lady now, they say, mirrors are even fake. Just bring out a phone. And then they see them. You think they are, they are chatting? No, they are looking at themselves again. Why do they need a constant reminder? Because they forget. Listen, you need also to begin to do it. Because if you only look at the mirror of your vision, you will forget it. But if you are actively involved in your vision, you will not need a reminder. It's time to do it. I tell people, when it is in your sight that you are beautiful, you won't go around with mirrors. Praise God. Let's go to the message. Uh, yeah, yeah. Amen. All right, so I, I just want to give certain advices for those who want to be doers. I, you know, I, 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 I love the game of football. I, I think those who know me know me about that. And you know, you see some people say, ah, ah, that's not the way to play that free kick. You are supposed to eat the ball from this angle. Praise God. <laughs> but when you play, maybe in church, brethren are playing, and then you pass to them, 
<laughs> they cannot even eat the bowl. So it's easy to talk. It is the doing. That's why no one is ever rewarded for talking. Except you, Alibaba. Except you talk and people laugh. But for talking about your dreams and your vision, no one is rewarded. It is those who do it that are rewarded. And God wants us to be doers. Not just talkers. Noah did not only say, I receive a dream and I receive something from God. He began building it. Moses did not stay in the backside of the desert. He went back to Egypt because that's what God called him to. What has God called you to? I have had it enough. The word has had it enough. It's time to begin to do it. One way in which you are sure that you know what you are doing is for you to do it. So I want just to advise some people here. How can I do? Advice for people who want to become performers. Who want to perform. I great performers. Those who perform. Those who do things. The first one, I want you to know that you need to stop giving excuses. Tell your neighbor, stop giving excuses. So stop saying, I'm not rich, I don't have finances. Ask a guy, why have you not started your business? Say, I don't have people who finance me. Uh, I, I, I'm poor. Uh, my father is poor. Stop giving those excuses. There will always be a reason not to achieve something. There will always be seeds of doubt inside of you. There shall always be lions on the street. Bible says concerning the lazy man. Proverbs 22, 13, 26, 13. He said, he said I can't go out. He said, because there is lion on the street. <laughs> some of us are not reaching out to our goals because we have made lions in our hearts you know what i say i didn't say there are lions there we have made them in our hearts oh why can't you start that business you talk about the lions of finance you talk about the lions of men you talk about the lions of lack of ideas you are talking about lions but god is saying go in this power that you have have you discovered that no one ever gave excuses to god and god say i'm satisfied now you can sit down why? Because before God called you to do it, he knows he has equipped you for it. Lions on the street does not only deter the lazy. It also desires those who only dream of greatness and never achieve it. One of my best portions of scriptures is Exodus chapter 3 and Exodus chapter 4. It captures a conversation between divinity and humanity. Between the natural and the supernatural. Between God and man. Between the created and the creator. Again and again, Moses thought of excuses. Why he will not and he cannot go and lead Israel out of the land of bondage. He said, I'm not eloquent. He said, they will ask me which God is are you talking, are you referring to? He gave excuses. He said, what if they don't believe me? Excuses. But God did not listen. For every excuse, God gave him the way out. God was telling him, I've already made preparation for all that you are making excuses for. Sometimes the reason you are not fully into the prepared will of God is because you have not gone out in faith. Many times, sir, you know, we say, I've had preachers preach it, and some people also say that Peter's lack of faith was the reason he sinked. Uh, but at least he's one of the only people that walk on water. If you think it's easy, try and walk on swimming pool water. At least he stepped out. A lot of people did not even step out at all. They stayed. He said, if you are the one, bid me to come. And then he stepped out. You need to step out because until you step out, miracles will not come under you. There is the hand of heaven ready to lift you up. But God is saying, come out. God is saying, take the first step. God is saying, leap in me. A leap in God is not a leap into sp space. It's a leap into assuredness. There is a certainty with God. Gideon in Judges chapter 6, he gave excuses also. But God told him in 6 14, go in this strength of yours. God said, go, the Bible made it clear. God says, go in this strength of yours. I mean, we listen to me, it's God saying to even tonight, go in this strength of yours. Don't tell me you are young. Don't tell me you are not of age. Don't tell me the time is not now. Don't tell me I, I don't have people. Don't tell me I don't have money. Don't tell me I don't have the expertise. God is saying, go in this strength of yours. Tell your neighbor go. Tell your neighbor go. go. Number two, you must have a possibility mentality. There is always a way with God. If there is no way, <laughs> can I say that to somebody? If there is no way, God will make one. Isaiah 43 and verse 19. The Bible says, God will make a way. Say, behold, I do a new thing. 
Say, shall you not know it? He said, I'll make way in the wilderness and rivers in desert. God is saying, I know it's not normal for you to see rivers in desert. But on you, concerning you, I will make something new. I will create a new order. I will make a new law concerning you. Why? Because you trust me and you believe in what I told you. It's time for you to let God be God. And just be human. Let God do what God has said. Don't think about how it cannot be done. Because impossibility is swallowed where God steps in. Whenever God steps in, impossibility is swallowed. With God, the Bible says nothing shall be impossible. Luke chapter 1 and verse 37. If God is the owner of the vision, it will ensure it come to pass. Don't ever allow negativity to lay hold of you. Connect with God. Stick with God. Joshua was faced with the arduous task of leading a nation and defeating giants. God assured him and I believe his word is also enough for us even in the now. Joshua chapter 1 verse 6, the Bible says, Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land that swore to their ancestors to give them. What is God's word to you? What is God's word to me? God is saying, be strong. Be courageous. Someone needs to say that, muta that to yourself. God is saying to me, you need to hear heaven open and hear that sweet voice of the Father saying, be strong. Be strong. Be strong. I am with you. Be strong and courageous. That's God's word to us. Impossibility does not exist. He only exists in your mind. With God, nothing shall be impossible. And then number three, don't overthink things. Sometimes our problem is that we just think too much. Hey, when you tell some people, we are going to be the house, they are going to tell you who we said the land to us. Where is land in Jerry? Where is the land going to come from? They will think of, you said only one thing, they will think of 100 things. Sometimes we think too much. And that's not our fault. It's what we put in. If the word of God is inside of you, it's easy to have faith. If social media is inside of you, it's also easy to think too much. When you spend half of your time on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitter people are not nice people. Hello? I don't know about you, but Twitter and words. You know, you can go on Instagram and talk about image. That's why some people don't even understand Twitter. Because it's words. And those guys, they, are, they have no chill. You can lie to people on Instagram. No, not on Twitter. They don't forget and they don't forgive. So if you just stay there and keep staying there, it will affect your faith. Because they will tell you how the world is going to enter recession. And here you are. God said in 2020, you are going to start your own company. And Twitter is saying nobody will have money. What will you believe? God, my brother, God. What God has called us to is a faith journey. You can think of ideas, but you shouldn't overthink fault, negativity, or even facts. Not the facts. Don't overthink them. Let God be God. Let God show up for you. Let his presence guide you. If you will enter into the fullness of God's mind, you first must accept that he is the God of spirit and not a God of logic. A father in the Lord used to tell us the story of how God told him that they should move to Tanke. At that time, this whole place was a forest. It was not thinkable. In fact, certain people said, but there's nobody there. But he said, that's what God said. And he came on that word. Today, Tanke is like the center of the whole town. Why are we located therefore in the prime? Because we listen to God. Because he listened to God. You must understand that you cannot get into your possibilities by mere thinking. You need to honor and obey God's word. You need to do what God has said. It may not make sense, but you must learn to do it. Jesus said to Peter, Peter, go to the fish. Take money from it. If I tell you I stop this service now, and I said, Hello, brother. Go to the fish at Agbadam and bring dollars for us. What would you do? Don't answer. I think I, know, I, have, a, I have a general idea. <laughs> they might even report me and said, I think our pastor is as run mad. But that's what it took. If Peter had also rationed it out, it does not make any sense. Are you trying to say a fish swallowed uh, money, probably in Kogi, and moved to Agbadam? How is it going to happen? You don't overthink ideas with God. Israel moved forward. You know, sometimes when I read the Bible, I just smile. 
God said, why are you praying? Moses said, there's Red Sea. Pharaoh is following us. There's a recipe before us. God said, Why are you praying? Pray, move forward. If I were, I said to what, sir? This is recipe. You say, Move forward. What, what do you mean? But when he said, Move forward, it's because there is a plan. There is a plan. The moment you take that first step, there is a plan to part the sea. But if you do not move forward, the sea will not be parted. If you do not move forward, relationships will not come. If you do not move forward, God's People, kingdom connection will not come. If you do not move forward, things will not fall in line in pleasant places. Sir. First of all, what God needs from you is a moving forward. You know, when I read scriptures, I just smile. Imagine Goliath. Tall. If I was one of the armies of Israel, I would say, David, David. You know, you don't call David, David like that. You call him in your Yoruba, in your accent. Hey, David. <laughs> you want to kill yourself with stones. It doesn't make any sense. Some people think that when God will give you an instruction, it will make sense. Some people think the weapons of warfare will make sense to the world. Some people think that what God will use, I will have you use in the word that will be your chain breaker and that will break the ground others have not broken will be things that will make sense. No. Stop reading those Harvard books. Read the word of God. It is in, those, in that book and with God that your divine instruction will come from. Number four, you need to quit procrastination. The enemy of performance is always delay. I will do it later. I will do it later. Nothing is a vision or life goals like procrastination. It's time to do it. Oh, you need to rehearse on keyboard. But here is also a movie. What are you going to do? Say, I can watch it later. I can, I can learn it later. Let me just finish this episode. The reason your smile, the way you smile, your expectation of guys are the way they are is too much of Korean movies. In real life, people have pimples. In Korea films, they don't. They are spotless. People have sports in real life. Quit procrastinating on the things you need to do. Don't put off till tomorrow what you can do now. Don't put off till a better and more opportune time when you can undo it today. Listen to this. I saw this part of scripture. And I know we quote it when it comes to casting our cares and all of that. Matthew chapter 6 verse 34. See, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow, we worry about itself. That's what we say. But the ending verse part says, each day has enough trouble of his own. So why are you trying to pile more trouble into tomorrow? Each day has enough trouble. So why not just face today's trouble? The reason you seem to be overloaded is because you, have, you, are keep, you keep putting troubles into your tomorrow keep putting into your tomorrow that's why some people cannot even stand straight again because the more trouble you put on yourself you have become you have been bent by trouble bent over by trouble every day has enough trouble before you say i will do it tomorrow tell yourself better do it today tomorrow is still coming with his own special designed trouble there's an assignment for each day don't procrastinate and finally believe in god's investment what is God's investment? You. Believe in God's investment? What is God's investment? You. <laughs> Someone needs to believe in God's investment. Believe in the abundance resource God has given you. Someone said, how can, I, how can you say I should believe in God's investment? And you are saying I'm God's You are God's primary investment. He made you in his own image. He didn't only do that. You sinned. He sent his son to die for you on the cross. That's an investment. His son died for you. Not only that, he now gave you his own, own, his own spirit <laughs> to live inside of you. Not only that, he now created you, wired you with a reason, a purpose, God's investment. Believe in the abundance resource God has given you. He has not sent you here to waste away. Care so much for you. God has made an investment in you and God is not a waster. I don't know about you, but I know people, when they make investment, they sit on it. They watch over it. Nobody buys a house. Bro, I don't care how wasted the land is or something. But let's just even think big. Praise God. Praise God. I know there are rich guys in church. Hallelujah. So you buy a land, uh, buy a land at Banana Island. Glory to God. You claim it, brother. I believe it. Glory to God. And so you buy the land. 
and then you just leave it. Ah. In fact, you will probably be sending somebody there every day or you put a fence and then you put camera there so that nobody trespass. You know why? You are watching over your investment. What God does also is that God has invested so much in us that his camera are fully over us. The eyes of the Lord are fully on us, watching over his investment. Someone say, am I sure I'm going to make it? The investor is watching. Am I sure that I will have the resources I need? The investor is backing me up. How am I sure that my destiny will be fulfilled? <laughs> the investor is not a waster. How am I sure that I will not lose out in life? Uh, the investor that backs me up also guarantees me. I know for certain I cannot fail. I know for certain that I cannot be damaged. I know for certain I will fulfill my destiny. I know for certain that if I step out in faith, it's going to bear me on eagle's wings. I know for certain it's going to carry me. You need to start doing it. You need to stop dreaming it and start doing it. Post-COVID, the word is for those who do it. It's not for those who think it. It's for those who believe and step out in faith and ensure that they move in the reality even of what God has promised. How many of us are ready? For the reality of what God has promised. Close your eyes, bow your head. Reality of what he has promised. I know he will do it. He's not a man that he should lie, and not a son of man that he should repent. As he said, he will not do it. As he promised, won't he make it good? Out of two immutable things of which it is impossible for God to lie. I want you to make a commitment this night. And say, God, I'm going to do it. I'm going to believe your word. And not only believe, I'm going to act on your word. That's, that, that's, that, that's the main line. That, that, that's the core of this message. That's the main gist. I'm not going to believe you. I'm not just going to confess it. I'm going to act on it. I'm going to go on based on your word. I'm going to do what you have said. I'm going to live in the fullness of what you have called me to. Because I know you are the investor. You back me up. You guarantee me. Hallelujah. It does not matter what the matter is. It doesn't matter what the devil says. It doesn't matter those who gang up against me. I know you are with me. You are for me. You are the investor that keeps watching. You are the investor that keeps guiding. You are the investor that keeps looking. You are the investor that guarantees. Glory to God. We honor you, Lord Jesus. We honor you, Spirit of the living God. We honor you, Father divine. We honor you. Thank you. We worship you. Father, we make a commitment to do your word, to do our purpose, to do that which you have given us, to live according to our vision, to live according to our purpose. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you are listening to me and you have never given your life to Jesus, so when we talk about vision, purpose, it seems very strange to you. You don't have a working relationship with God. I want you to know that Jesus died on the cross for you. He invested already concerning you. And it's time to begin to make him have a reward. It's time to enter into a rewarding relationship with him. If you are listening to me and you are saying, I want to give my life to Jesus. Wherever you are, God is seeing you. God is looking at you. Would you put your hand on your chest and sincerely ask him to come in? Sincerely ask him to come in. Say, God, I'm a sinner. Come in. Live here. Dwell here. Be the Lord. Be the God over my life. Yes. If you are doing that, can you say this prayer after me? Eternal Father, thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for my sins. I believe and I confess that he is Lord. I know that I'm a sinner, but I ask oh, Jesus that you will come into my heart. Live in me. Dwell in me. You are the baptizer in the spirit. Baptize me with the sweet Holy Ghost. Transform my life. Make me whole again. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. We have said that prayer is the beginning of the best days of your life. So much joy in heaven because of you. And we are glad. We are glad that you can start this journey with God. I want to encourage you. There's a Bible-based, Bible-believing church around you. A brother close to you, a sister close to you. Share your testimony. Tell them what has just happened to you. And let God be glorified. You can also get across to us at the Energize Church at gmail.com. We'd like to hear your story and we'd like to be part of your spiritual journey. The Lord bless you.